Hi everyone, this is Monica Traphagen, a lead meteorologist at WFO Salt Lake City. I'll be narrating this training video about edit retention, and component of Forecast Builder you may find occasionally helpful while editing grids. I'd like to thank Darren Van Cleef and David Church at WFO Salt Lake City, Ryan Leach and Chris Gibson at WFO Missoula, and Mark Laufelbein and Mike Stoudemire at STID for the help with creating this video. This video will be divided into three parts. In the first part, I'll give a little bit of background about edit retention, its purpose, examples of when it might be useful to you, and some things to keep in mind as you use the tool. In part two, I'll describe the smart tools that make up edit retention and explain the color coding it uses. Finally, I'll briefly demonstrate how to use the components of edit retention and run through some examples of using it. Now let's go through the background information. So what is the purpose of edit retention? What can it do for you? Well, edit retention gives you, the forecaster, the ability to retain grid edits so they do not change with future cron-based population of NBM grids. You can use it either for an entire grid or for specific edit areas within a grid. Edit retention also provides tools to compare previously saved edits to the current guidance, as well as the guidance when the grid edits were originally made. Edit retention also allows for more general tracking of grid edits. It will also provide verification statistics for those grid edits, but that's beyond the scope of this video. That's all well and good, but you might be wondering when edit retention might be useful for you to use. Here at Salt Lake City, we found several scenarios where it works well. First, it is good to use when attempting to counteract a recurring bias in the NBM. For example, on occasions when the 15Z scry grids are abnormally high compared to the surrounding grids. That's something that typically persists over multiple runs of the NBM. We've also noticed a high bias in cloud cover over our northwest desert, the Salt Flats area, and edit retention can often be useful in that case. You may also use edit retention to account for local effects that may be beyond the scope of the NBM where your forecaster experience may lead to greater expertise. Some examples of this include cold pools, such as from inversions, or the effects of persistent stratus on temperature. Broadly, you want to use edit retention in areas where, given your experience, it seems unlikely that the NVM will catch up in future runs. As you explore the use of edit retention, here are some things to keep in mind. Edit retention is intended to be used sparingly. For areas, as mentioned before, where the guidance shows an error or bias that will likely continue in future runs. For areas where the guidance has the potential to improve, or if there's just a lot of uncertainty in the forecast, edit retention is less likely to be useful for your verification purposes. And one more thing to keep in mind. If you inherit a forecast with retained edits, it is very important to take a close look and determine whether or not those edits need to be retained. In many cases, the guidance does indeed catch up and keeping edits longer than necessary will diminish the quality of your forecast. Do not assume that edits deemed necessary for a previous forecast package are still necessary in the current package. Let's now take a look at the components that make up edit retention. There are four main smart tools that make up edit retention. Keep edits is a tool you use if you've made edits and want them to be retained. You can use it for a specific edit area or the entire grid, which is the default option and will make it so your edits are not overwritten when the cron or forecast builder runs. Forecasters need to run keep edits each time they make edits they'd like to retain. Clear edits is the tool to use to stop edits from being retained. It removes previously retained edits and populates with the latest guidance. Use the edit retention compare small tool, smart tool for further investigation of grids with retained edits. If a grid is set to retain edits, this tool compares those edits to the latest guidance and also shows the user what the available guidance looked like at the time the edit was made. Finally, the Load Edit Area tool, as it says, loads the edit area where the grid edits are retained. Edit Retention uses different colors to show you the edit retention status of the grids you're working on. These highlights will appear when running Forecast Builder, or, if you like to see them without running Forecast Builder, you can use the Edit Retention Highlight tool in the Consistency menu. As a note, you must have your GFE Grid Edit view set to normal to see these highlights. Also, they're only available in the time range for which your office runs the Forecast Builder cron. So what do the highlights mean? Here's a guide. If a grid shows up as green, it has not been edited since the last run of the Forecast Builder cron. If a grid is yellow, it has been edited since the last cron run, but those edits are not marked to be retained and will be overridden with the next cron run. If a grid is red, it has been edited and those edits have been marked for retention. That is, the grid is on manual. Finally, edit retention is not available for grids that are gray.
All right, here we are in GFE for a demonstration of edit retention, its components, and some examples of how you might use it. As you can see, we've already got the highlights on. You can do that from the consistency menu. You go to edit retention highlight. It does take a minute to load, so that's why I did it ahead of time. And as you remember from the previous, the grids in green, those are the ones that haven't been edited at all. The cron ran, forecaster decided it was fine, and they went on their way. The grids in yellow do have some edits in them, but those edits were not marked for retention. And then we see a grid marked in red. That means we've kept edits, either an entire grid or in an edit area within the grid. If you want to go in and see where those edits are for, you can use the Edit Retention Load Edit Area tool, and that'll show you in the case edits were retained for the entire grid. So obviously it's not a part of the real forecast. I added one there just to show the functionality of it. Now let's say that you see a potential area to use edit retention. In this case, we've got a 15 sky, 15Z sky grid that has significantly more cloud cover than the ones around it, with no meteorological reason for that. You know, at the time of this video uh, publication, that was a problem with the MBM. So let's say we wanted to delete this grid. and then interpolate to get something that we feel is more realistic like this. And because that problem at 15Z tends to be persistent in GFE, in the MBM rather, that's an edit we want to keep. So you would right click and go to keep edits. As you can see it defaults for the edit area for the entire CWA and brings that up so you can see it. And then that grid is marked in red so that we can see that we're retaining that in it. You do have the ability to compare from the guidance. You click the, as you just did there, the Edit Retention Compare tool. And it'll show you what you put on manual and what it was originally, and then the difference between the two. Um, and, and then if you're going in the future, it will also show you the guidance at the time the edit was made, and then the current guidance. So let's go to another example, one that uses an edit area. Given that we're in the in the spring, I, I don't have a real life example of, of using edit retention for a particular edit area. So we'll go with a hypothetical. In the winter, we often have because of inversions times when um, the NBM is over forecasting the temperature in some valley locations. So let's pretend for the sake of this that we're seeing, it'll load the edit area for me, here in the Bear River Valley as well as the Cache Valley. Let's say that those temperatures are too high and we want to lower them. Say by a significant amount. And we want to keep those edits just for that edit area. And again, go to Edit Retention, Keep Edits. Give it just a moment and you'll see that grid's been changed to red. If someone later wants to see where those are, you would load that edit area again. And when the cron is populated, it'll populate for the areas that are outside the edit area, but not for those edits that we saved. And then last, if you want to get rid of your edits and populate with the latest guidance, you would go to Edit Retention, Clear Edits, and the edits go away. And we'll do that again here. And you'll see the latest guidance has been put in there. So that's the end of the training video. Thanks for watching. Bye.